time accumulated and we have become more sluggish, more, more animal-like, more, more beastly and so on. We see now, look at the world, how we treat each other. It is absolutely ghastly. Uh, we have totally lost our divine heritage. So what I'm saying is that you and I, everybody else, is basically an angel in disguise. We do not have to become an angel, we already wear an angel. And this is very important on the spiritual path, because basically we only have to relearn our original mm. perfection instead of starting something totally new, which I may not want to learn. No, I've known it all, and I've come back. Hey Hans, how you doing today? Hi Scott, wonderful, and how are you doing? I'm doing amazing, and I'm excited for our conversation. You know, you have such a wealth of knowledge around spirituality, consciousness, metaphysics, lots of the things that are kind of swirling around us that we might not be aware of. And so I'm delighted that we're going to have this conversation. And I think where I'd like to start things off is when did consciousness, spirituality, when did this start to become an area of interest for you? I think very young, when I doubted whatever was taught in the churches, that it didn't make sense to me. So as a young person, I tried to find out already very early, there must be more to life than what the churches were teaching. And uh, I was a teenager, I think, at that time. And uh, difficult for me to find anything because there was no Google. But over time, I got involved in many different paths, from starting with Edgar Cayce and many, many other uh, paths, uh, big, well-known paths over the time. Uh, so I always kept on studying the spiritual side. It, uh, for me, that was the only real reality there is, and this world here is only a temporary kind of stage. So I um, gathered a lot of knowledge, not necessarily wisdom, because wisdom means applying what you know, <laughs> and I'm working on that one very hard. <laughs> But um, a lot of knowledge uh, over the time. And through an accident, uh, not through an incident, that um, a medium came up to me uh, one day and said, um, your father is here who had died five years ago and wanted to thank you for all the information you gave him prior to his death because he didn't believe in life after that. And he was so touched by it. And whatever I told him helped him so much to find his bearings on the other side. And he also then said that he is now working at the receiving side of swords that have died. And would I please write more books about it and tell other people what I know? Until that time, I never thought of getting public, going public with what I have studied over the years. But um, his comments gave me some thoughts and I decided to start little YouTube videos uh, where I draw visually, because I'm a writer and illustrator by profession, um, how I understand how all the spiritual world's uh, laws fit together. And that's basically what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Very short videos on YouTube. They're free. There's nothing to join. There is no, nothing to pay for. Um, and they are also totally just an offering. If everybody likes, anybody likes it, great. If they don't like it, it's fine too. I have no need to convince anybody. I merely share what I have found out being true to for myself. And also to understand it better, I take the written text and then con um, transfer it into the visual images, which helps me to understand the situation, how it all links together so much better. So it is for myself to learn for myself. That's why I make this video and basically share these videos for those who are also interested in these topics. Well, I am very grateful for your videos. I think they do a fantastic job of distilling complex ideas in a highly engaging way. And I agree, the best way to learn something is to teach it, is, 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 is to codify that information into a tangible, cogent narrative. And I think one of the more compelling ideas that's come alive for me that I know you talk about is this notion that earth is a school. Um, it is a school for our evolution as beings beyond our humanhood. And I guess Maybe we can talk a little bit about your perspective on that. And I'd also be curious to understand when did that wisdom, when and how did that wisdom start to take, take root in your awareness? Well, to answer the first, the last question, um, it was about 40 years ago then when I came into contact with a spiritual path given through a woman in Germany. Her name is Gabriele. 
which and the information comes directly from the highest um, realm. Um, and it was of such profoundness and depth and clarity and simplicity that it just blew me away. And everything else that I'd learned until then, I had to question or sort of put it into a different kind of arrangement because I've never heard it so clearly and plainly and openly explained like she does it in her books. Um, you will not find her on the internet because she doesn't want any personality cult. Only you can find are her books. Again, what I also liked about this particular path because it doesn't have any teachers. There is no hierarchy. There's nothing to join. There's nothing to pay. It is only the material given to you from the highest spiritual worlds, and you can do with it what you like. And in these teachings, I found such clarity and also began to understand that we are all perfect cosmic beings. And unfortunately, through what the Bible calls the fall, we have actually lost our perfect state through our selfish willfulness and have slowly removed ourselves from the pure heavens. Remember, everything, absolutely everything, is nothing than vibration and energy. So what we see, any object we see, a television set, is nothing than vibration. And we also speak of the various spiritual realms of vibrational realms. We are coming from the highest vibrational realm, the pure absolute reality of the seven dimension, and have slowly over eons and eons and eons of time through our selfishness and self-centeredness, acted against the law of cosmic love. And that has created what we call karma or soul shadows. And these soul shadows have over time accumulated and we have become more sluggish, more, more animal-like, more, more beastly and so on. We see now, look at the world, how we treat each other. It is absolutely ghastly. Uh, we have totally lost our divine heritage. So what I'm saying is that you and I and everybody else is basically an angel in disguise. We do not have to become an angel. We already were an angel. And this is very important on the spiritual path because basically we only have to relearn our original mm. perfection instead of starting something totally new, which I may not want to learn. No, I've known it all and I'm coming back. So earth was given to those what we call fallen angels in the boat um, as a period, as a time where we can very undo, uh, can do undo our karma in a very short time. Because in the purification spheres, it takes a long time to undo our karma. And it's a different sense of uh, time there as well. But here on Earth, we are only there for what, less than 30,000 days. Here on this planet, it's a very short visit. And in this plan on this planet, we are interacting with other souls from other different purification spheres. And we can clear up all the karma and all the ungood things that we have created over centuries and past lifetimes and ever before. So this is a great opportunity to pure, purify ourselves. That's why life on earth is tough, very tough, but it is not overly tough because prior to our birth, we were shown exactly the challenges we were go about to face by incarnating. So we knew that we are coming onto this planet and there will be very difficult challenges, but we have all agreed to it. Nobody is here on planet Earth against their own will. I think this is such an important point um, that I have found in my own journey where recognizing lots of the hardships that seem like they're unfair, like we've been a victim, just understanding that for many of these instances, we actually chose those circumstances for our evolution, it is such a freeing experience. And I can, you know, practically speaking, I know that that's helped me heal relationships with people in my life that I later realized were actually part of an agreement to, to come down and, and give and to work together in order to create the circumstances for the learning and evolution. And yeah, I think it's such an important thing to consider at this time where there's war, where there's things like climate change that seem, you know, I've heard people say things like, why would any, we ever want to bring anybody into this world? And the, the paradox of that statement is that the people that are coming into this world want to be in this world. Yeah. yeah and they have to teach something. Yeah. And as you said, the reason why, why you found this teaching so relieving is because you basically did self um, self recognition and self responsibility. You took responsibility about your life. You stopped blaming others and circumstances. And when we stop blaming others and seeing that 
ourselves no longer as a victim. That is where the freeing comes from. And because everything, as Byron Katie says so wisely, everything happens for us and not to us. And I think I think this is a very fascinating point that I would love for you to talk about kind of the mechanics of how this works. One of the things that I observed organically in my experience was that it seemed to be that life started to show me where my issues were, where, where my kind of subconscious attachments and just the things that blocked me from having an open heart to life. And it seemed to do this one after the other, after the other, after the other. And I started to realize, wow, it's almost like reality is being orchestrated perfectly in order to show me all of these things. And I've heard you talk about the mechanics of how this works in your videos. And I think it would be, I'd love to hear about it from your perspective. As I mentioned earlier, we all have basically overshadowed ourselves with karma, which are sort of all the things. Whenever we did something wrong against the law of love, and I mean the spiritual love, not the human love, um, that actually created a shadow on our soul. And these, soul, uh, these shadows are not only stored in our soul and in our body and our aura, uh, but in, in ourselves, but also in the repository planets of the material and semi-material universe. All the planets around us are nothing but storage kind of containers mm. of karma. And they are loaded up there. And these planets constantly move. And once they have reached a certain constellation or are they full, they download the karma back to us. The very same thing, what we sow, we reap. I mean, there's nothing new to us. So we get back what we have given once given out into the universe or to another person or to the animal world, wherever. It comes back to us in small portions and we call this the daily impulses, which every day you are, is made up of these little impulses or building blocks, which is nothing else but karma being downloaded from the purification spheres, from the, uh, the repository planets into our life. Like, for instance, the nasty phone call you got today, somebody cut you off in the traffic, then you had an argument with your wife. These are no coincidences. This is all vibrational um, but, uh, vibrational stuff which comes now into our life it's because right now we are strong enough and we are actually ready to clear it up, to find forgiveness, to understand why we do it, and to purify ourselves just by understanding that this is actually something, an opportunity for me to grow for self-recognition and also self-responsibility. So all these things come to us to help us and to serve us, but we have created them. So in other words, all the karma which I once did in this or in past lifetimes returns back to me when the time is right. And I've agreed to this prior my birth, and I'm ready to face it, even if it's painful, horrible, and I may even die. But death does not exist. It's just only basically leaving this physical body. And it is not as bad as it is when you look at it as a karma unloading, because even in illness, it's nothing but a unloading a flowing out of karma so you can always see the positive in every negative and that i think is a very important focus on the spiritual path to always find the positive in every negative situation and give the energy to the positive because mm -hmm. then you will feel that the challenges you have failed to face are actually as you discovered yourself moments of growth it's a very powerful recontextualization of reality that brings meaning to, to everything and in, 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 in such a powerful way. And I, and I guess one thing I'd be curious to get your perspective on is the notion that everyone is simultaneously working out their karma in perfect orchestration, or do you believe that there's potentially kind of simultaneous realities existing to facilitate that? Simultaneous realities or simultaneous lives or worlds may be or may not be there. I do not give it any energy because it doesn't help me. Even knowing mm. whether, I mean, a lot of discussion on the new age age is about there is another parallel reality and so on. That's all very well, but I have to pay my rent today. And I have, et cetera, and I have mm. got a, that issue with my wife. That I have to deal with. Whether there are parallel lives, maybe, maybe not. I'm not answering that in one way or the other. If people wish to believe in it, that's fine. If not, I have to deal with the here and now. And the here and now is given to me very clearly through my sensory senses, what I feel, what I think, what I taste and eat. And uh, all the, the five senses show me 
what is right now here in front of me. And whenever there is a negative reaction in me, this doesn't sound right, I hate this, etc. That's something, that's where the list comes. Look at it, look at it, look at it, and yep. let it go and change it into love. And we can do it. It's not that difficult. It's, first off, I'm so happy that you responded the way that you did. I feel like I'm kind of surrounded by many people today that are kind of entangled in these debates around reality. And was this, you know, was this war started in secret or not? And it's, it's kind of just a waste of energy in my opinion. Um, and, uh, I agree with you. Like our work is very clear. It's right in front of us. I don't know about you, but I have plenty of it still. <laughs> and, and that's where the, and that's where the focus is. Um, and I, and I guess that's why a lot of uh, different wisdom traditions talk about these various kind of esoteric concepts. They're, they're distractions. Yeah. Um, they're distractions from the ultimate goal, which is returning to that divine also, state. Uh, it, uh, because it involves our intellect, our mm. ego. We can, we can, knowing this and so on, we can really get high on our intellect and our ego. So as it's not a practical, it doesn't have much practicality in our day-to-day -day life to clear up because we've got, as you said, our plate is full. As a young father, <laughs> family father, your plate is full. You probably have hardly any time for yourself. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it, it's, you, it seems like you speak from experience. Um, the, the question I have for you is, is and I, I have a very similar practice of kind of using my response to life as the primary means of evolution. What do you do, practically speaking, when you notice yourself get triggered, disturbed, um, some some type of response that's indicative that there's an underlying karma that needs to be investigated? Well, the main thing is that I recognize it. And that sometimes, I, well, very often, I don't recognize it. I get carried away with my negative feeling for a while until, hang on. And I do, twice a day, I do actually a review, day review, half a day, in the midday and in the evening as well to review the day. And that's usually the latest when I find out, uh-uh, oh, you were on a very art emotional level there and then i find it very quickly what it is i don't i mean i'm i'm living with myself long enough i know myself i know my tricks <laughs> and how i deceive myself but yeah in most cases it's very easy to find and um it's question of usually forgiveness forgiving oneself and forgiving the other person and repentance and um, because I re repentance and remorse for whatever we think we have done is very important uh, it's not enough mentioned in the in the uh, New Age teachings. They always sort of skip that subject. But I strongly believe that if deep feeling of remorse and repentance is important, because that energy, deeply river, is stored in our soul as well. And when it is stored there, it helps us next time we are tempted to do the same mistake again, it comes as a memory and says, oh, don't do it again. So it's mm. very important to have that kind of registry in, in, one's, in one's soul, in one's life. And that's the steps, basically. I look at it and I try to do it less and less, whatever I find wrong in my life. And it sometimes takes a long time. Um, but we have to also be not uh, too harsh on ourselves either. We should take us our lightly. We don't should, should take us too serious either. I mean, that is a very, the spiritual word is very clear. It says, I, don't take yourself too serious. It's, uh, it's, you don't get anything when you just sort of play the martyr and what uh, of your own suffering. No, take yourself light and says, okay, I made a screwed up here. I'm definitely do it next time better and I'm sorry about it and move on. But uh, if you sort of self-condemnation doesn't get us anywhere. So be straightforward with yourself because you have to live with yourself for the rest of your life. One of the ideas that I've heard you communicate is not only the importance of showing forgiveness to ourselves and to others, but also forgiveness to the divine and how th that is a requisite for us, or, or, or I guess something that can really kind of accelerate our healing um, and evolution. Could you talk a little bit about that? I'm sorry if I uh, didn't mention it right at the beginning. When I spoke about the forgiveness, I meant the towards the divine. Yes, I'm sorry, and I'm pleased you brought that up. When I need, uh, and I, when I see something wrong, or I've done something really wrong, I ask for forgiveness into the to the higher divine, to the Christ conscious, to God conscious. I put it into the light of the Christ light and ask for conversion. 
having the negative energy converted into positive energy, because that is basically the Christ energy in our life, is there to convert the negative into the positive. So yes, you are right, the, the dialogue is with the divinity in ourselves. The whole kingdom of God is in us. It's not out there somewhere, it's in us. And that is the key element. So when I find something which I have done uh, wrong, which I feel is wrong and harmful, I go within myself and deal there from that uh, level, I clear it up. Or if I have hurt somebody, then of course I have to go and ask for forgiveness that person. So um, a question that I would have for that practice is, do you feel like you're dialoguing with kind of the inner voice of the divine when you when you ask for forgiveness, or is it more just a declaration? Um, it depends. I think it's declaration, but I feel it's a dialogue. I'm not hearing words back or something. I can't. Mm. I'm not that way gifted, but I feel feelings back or something like it's okay or something like this. A feeling that. Uh, I feel relieved, so I do get a response, but the dialogue is it's uh, it's probably more a declaration in a way, but I totally surrender it's basically nothing than form of surrender mm. Mm. and the yes. powerful and we have to surrender i mean eventually you have to give, uh, give up our body. I think we have to surrender all the time, we have to learn to surrender and uh, allow the divinity to take over and help us and guide us so that is I think the path which uh, which worked for me. That's, that's, that's wonderful and inspiring. I think one thing that you talk about in your videos is the notion that there are a, a large amount of souls that are here for the purpose of their evolution. And there's also many people who've descended to, to help us, to help us along that journey. I think the word that you used is called light workers. For people that are less familiar with that term, could you describe uh, what a light worker is? Uh, we have noticed that, particularly since the beginning of the last century, this planet has really experienced a tremendous increase of population. It used to be one and a half billion in the year 1900, and now we have got eight billion. So it's a real curve going straight up. The reason is that many souls are clamoring to get to incarnate to planet Earth right now because the Earth is going through traumatic, majorly changes. It's ascending into a higher level, into a higher vibration. And that means there will be a lot of chaos, a lot of mess, a lot of um, nasty situations, war, eruption, earthquakes, and so on. This will be very dramatic. Souls know this. From the spiritual world, says this is a very short visit, like going to the movies, basically. And you come here, and then you experience this tremendous pain, which then will relieve you of your karma. And when you come back, it may be traumatic you experience, and it may take some time for the soul to recover, but you will be relieved that you have done it. Therefore, billions of souls want to incarnate as the earth is going through this very difficult time right now. Unfortunately, they don't find enough babies or fetuses to, uh, to use because they have birth control and uh, other situations and abortions, which makes it difficult for many souls to come here at this time. But they're all coming here because the time is very special and very unique, and they want to help. But uh, sorry, uh, to experience their karma. In addition, a lot of souls who do have, who have not burdened themselves with sufficient karma, who do not need to come and incarnate to planet Earth to undo their karma, who are from a higher purification sphere and maybe even from the absolute reality, have also simultaneously incarnated at this time here to help people through this period. These are the, what we call the light worker, the people who are here, they are helping in, in war crisis, in war situations, in, in earthquakes and whatever it is, and also emotionally. So we do have people here who have incarnated here, not to undo their karma, but to be here to help other uh, human beings in these difficult times. Uh, Dolores Cannon wrote a wonderful book about it. I think it's the third wave. And she writes about that so many of these angelic beings who have incarnated as light workers having a very, very tough time here because they are not used to the pain and suffering we inflict on each other. 
And um, so they are very <laughs> depressed in some ways, but she reminds me and says, no, this is what uh, you have to go through and you will go through and you will be strong enough to do it. They all will be strong enough. But the periods can be very disheartening when you look at the world and you have never ever seen anything from where you come from the highest spheres. We, you and I are used to it. We have been probably in a hundred times, we have been in many wars and many difficult situations. Uh, for us, it's not even new anymore. But for a soul coming from a very high level, coming here to planet Earth, it's devastating. It's <clears throat> it's very interesting because it sounds like, despite the fact that someone might not have any car karma and be living in a very high evolutionary plane, they still need to go through the veil of ignorance and all of the many, many challenges um, while they are here. And they can also bind themselves. They can get lost in this. They can get into sensuality, whatever it is, and create karma. That's unfortunately. But they knew it. They knew it because their main purpose is service. The highest form of love is service. God serves all, be all uh, creation, and creation serves the higher level, our life forms. It's nothing but a uh, cycle of service everywhere, whether you see mm. from the mineral kingdom to the plant kingdom to the animal kingdom, nature beings and human beings or angelic beings. It is nothing but a cycle of service. That is the highest form of love. And when you are reached a very high form of love, you want to help and serve That's others, right. irrespective of the dangers. And they are driven by this in enormous high love, which is difficult for me or others <laughs> to perceive, to do that. But they are there, and they are in these difficult fields in the world, wherever there is some drum, drum, horrible stuff are happening, they are right among there and help people and dish out food and so on and, and give it. And anybody interested to see my video on the light workers, I explain very much in detail how that works. Not that it seems like it matters for the day-to-day -day experience, but I am curious, how would you understand if you are somebody that might be a light worker or merely a soul down here to do the karma work. I don't think I understood your question correctly. Can you I, I guess I guess my question was is that um how would someone know whether they were a light worker or whether they are merely working on their karma? I don't think it's for us to know. Mm. The lesson is for it doesn't matter. It's for everyone. The lesson is to love. The only lesson the only thing we have to learn is to love. So if you're, a, if you're a light worker or if you're an average uh, soul, uh, the lesson is the same. The light worker just works from a higher level of love. You and I work on, a, on our level of love. Um, but the message is the same. And it is, I think uh, it's a lot of vanity would creep in if, we would, if anybody would know that, whether they're a light worker or not. Very few people may know, yeah, the spiritual world can tell them that this is their task. But uh, for the most people, I think that would be detrimental. So I would never assume. I know, uh, well, I know some people who have a very special work done here on this planet. That's true. But I'm not one of them. I'm just sharing my stuff. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. I, I think you're right. I, I do think there is kind of an ego temptation that might want to grab hold of that and think that they're special. Um, however, you know, I also have had personal experience was where there is kind of a down there's a there is a remembrance of why i came here a downloading of of understanding and and what i was supposed to do which which frankly is very inspiring you know um and so i'm not sure you know that that could be a soul agreement it could be something else but um, you know, it's funny when I, I talk to a lot of people in business that are so curious about their purpose, they want to know what their purpose is. I try to find purpose. And my experience of that has been, it's something that emerges when you do this work yeah. versus something to be discovered versus something to go out and seek. Well, you had to go through your own kind of searching and exploration, etc., before you saw that, uh, particularly as an entrepreneur, where it's usually making money, being successful is number one. And you realized after having done your own experience, spiritual way on uh, Arawesca and so on, that this is probably not the only goal and that's not the goal for, right for you anymore. Mm. But many people have to go through this. M many people have to go through a 
egocentric kind of lifestyle for a certain while to understand this is not it. And they will be shown their way. We are continuously reminded where the, how the path for us is. And anybody who is on this on the ego trip and so on, it's fine. I've been there. I'm still there. <laughs> and I know what it feels like, but I'm trying to stay or steer away from it mm. and uh, to become less and less self-centered. That's beautiful. One thing I heard you say is that at the all that matters is how much we've lear- loved and how much we've served. Yeah. And That's- I think that is just such a amazing, powerful thing to try to remember each day as we move through life and what's really important. That's why I like the spiritual path, which I've been studying for 40 years, because of the absolute simplicity. There is no question. You can't even argue with that one. It's so straightforward. So it's absolutely wonderful and very clear. So we don't have to do learn anything abstract, big knowledge, etc. It's action, action, love, and uh, mm. keeping having loving thoughts and including people in our thoughts positively, and focusing on the positive aspects of everything around us. That keeps us on a higher vibration and much easier to love and to be of service to others if we can. There was a fellow podcast guest we had on named Steve Farrell, who's the f- founder of Humanities Team. Yeah. It's a very large platform for streaming spiritual information. And he was an entrepreneur as well, very successful before doing that. And one of the things he said that kind of aligns to what you're saying is, you know, at the end of my life, if I look back on this earth experience and all I was was a serial entrepreneur, I know I'll be really upset with myself. <laughs> And, you know, you just don't hear a uh, lot of entrepreneurs uh, talk like that. And yeah. I really, I mean, it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks and I thought it was so, so <laughs> profound. And, uh, you know, now he's living his life of service yeah, in his we, own we, unique sometimes way. Sometimes you can't rush things, I find. Mm. You can't rush things. Sometimes you have to go through that phase and, and then recognize, okay, this was not for me. Because if somebody else tells you, don't ever become an entrepreneur and and you really want to, that wouldn't be right either. Sometimes we have to burn our fingers a little bit to know that this is not for me because we always have the free will. I also would would say that one of the things is, is that a lot of times those skills that we build in those egocentric pursuits are important for how we can serve. Yes. You know, it's it's almost like a training ground. Um, positive and every negative. Exactly. Exactly. Which brings me to an interesting point. So in addition to the YouTube channel, you've written many, many children's books. 200. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would, I would say that's a, you know, a fair amount. Um, <laughs> yes. when, when did that process begin for you? Oh, that started something like 50 years ago. I was also in the business world before, and then I suddenly changed when I came to America. I changed my career and started to write and illustrate children's books. And uh, that was and is my main income and my own my life source. This is what I usually do. I don't do these videos as my main profession. But uh, that I've been doing and I've been enjoying it. It was wonderful. It's a wonderful time. I'm doing it less and less now because after 200 uh, books, you run a bit dry on stories. <laughs> well, it, it's it's still a prolific accomplishment. And a lot of the material covered and themes in some of those books is spiritual information. Is that correct? I have a series of, yeah, where um, a, a dog is explaining to a little child of who is God, who guardian angel, what is Christmas, who is Christ, and so on, for a young child for three or four years old. That is a special book series, which is available on my website, lifeexplained.com. Uh, anybody interested? Yeah, that is also for me. I did this as well as I did the videos a long time ago, just to really how do I really see this? And, 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 and for myself, I do these, all these books, mm. all my children's books, I did for myself. They must respond, there must something uh, I have to clarify in myself. And when I'm happy, then I share it with others. But it is a form of self exploration. Well, you know, what's also pretty cool is I find when you really, the purpose of the context of that self exploration is inspiration. Right, it's curiosity. There's a purity to it versus a means to an end. You often end up in serving yourself, being able to serve others, which is yeah. kind of exactly what you did. And 
one of the curiosities that I have is what have you learned in creating these books around some of these topics about uh, children, children and the education or information of, of around spirituality? Well, unfortunately, there is nothing can be taught like this in the schools because there is a law. You cannot really bring any religious stuff into public, into public schools, which may be good in some ways because you could get fanatics into that as well. Um, it doesn't really matter so much what the book says. For a child, I believe it's what the parents do. It's not mm. what we say to a child, it's what we do. And if we as parents are spiritual, inclined, and do the more or less try to do the right things, the child finds this more helpful than reading wise books written by some author whom they have never met. So I really believe number one is to be the better example to your child yourself. That's the only way the kids copy us. And never mind what we tell them in books or otherwise, they copy us. So um, the first thing is, I think, is for myself as a parent to be as what I consider as uh, what I say, as, as pure as I can be, or as authentic as I can be. And then the books are very helpful. But the books have zero effect to give to a child where the parents are murderers, stealers, or whatever, <laughs> having the vicious kind of thing. It just doesn't do much to a child then because they see the opposite and they cannot really put this together. So uh, it's always a question of how we interact with the children as human beings. Mm, mm, that's, that makes a lot of sense to me. And you know, it reminds me of a teaching of Eckhart Tolle. I took a course of his called Becoming a Teacher of Presence. And I was really excited to, you know, learn the secret, learn the information to share. And the whole thing you said is, is it's, it's not about what, it's not about the content that comes out of your mouth. It's your way of being. Yeah. That yeah, is authenticity. Yeah. That is, that is how you teach. Um, and uh, I found that to be very profound. And uh, it sounds like you've, you've discovered similar things in your own edification around conveying these concepts and ways of being to to our youth mm -hmm. yeah we are, it's constantly the whole universe is nothing but sending and receiving sending and receiving because it's vibration so we are sending out and the children receiving or anybody else receives and vice versa there's a constant exchange taking place all the time and it depends on what other vibrations that i'm sending out so that is the only area i have control over and if i try to be the more loving person then hopefully more loving vibrations will come out and they will also come back because whatever we send out, whatever we sow, we will reap. So it's all in our hand. How our life will be in the future is totally how I conduct myself today because our life is on rewind, which is another video I did, which means that everything what we are facing today on difficulty challenges are challenges that we once have given into the course of computer, into mm. the planets, and they're coming back to us. So whatever happens today to me is something that I personally have created in this or a previous lifetime. Mm. It's another powerful way to create meaning. I remember the teacher David Hawkins talked about how he got a surgery that basically was done without anesthesia, anesthesia where they stuck something into his leg and he realized he had a kind of a flash memory of stabbing someone in the leg oh, yeah. in a previous life. And it, always kind of just served as a very powerful example to me of it, precisely what you're talking about. One question I would have for you is, so there's this concept of kind of the karmic computer being downloaded and creating these daily experiences. But at the same time, you mentioned that, you know, we are actively kind of creating our experience um, with our choices that have certain vibrations that, you know, basically put things out and bring things back to us. How, how do you characterize that kind of karmic things that we've agreed to, as well as the responsiveness to how we engage the world? Well, we as spirit beings, we have given um, the gift, two gifts. One is eternal life, and the other one is free will. So at any given moment, we can choose how to act what kind of attitude we will have. Whatever face which we face, uh, situation we face, which we may have created from the past, it's now up to us with our free will of how do we face it. Do we take it as a stepping stone or a stumbling stone? We always have that choice. And therefore, uh, we can create our future according to how we respond to every situation that comes to us 
according to our free will. We know the God. As I said, it's, we're only here to love. Love is <laughs> the law. Uh, that is the law here. We know the answer. We know how we should reply, um, and not with revenge or hatefulness or blaming. Um, that is all old school. Now we know better, and we have it in our hands to walk this path uh, more um, divine, because we are divine beings. And if surely we would stumble many, many times. We make lots of mistakes, and then we just get up again. It's like an alcoholic who tries 50 times to stop drinking, but he always it's important to get up. It's not the That's next right. time drink. It's important that you get up again. And that getting up again, eventually, step by step, hopefully would bring us to a higher vibration. It's all a question of vibration. We have to get ourselves out of this low, earthly, a loaded karmic vibration into a higher vibration because it's all a law of attraction. Eventually, then we will attract it to a higher vibration. And this is how our soul in the soul level, in the purification sphere, slowly rises, rises higher back to the original um, pure heavens of the highest vibration, which is love, cosmic love. Mm. Sounds simple, a little bit harder in practice. <laughs> the The... The vibration stuff is very interesting, though, because I know there's a lot of people that are very kind of sciencey, science scientifically oriented, and you know, if you look at the emerging field of quantum physics and a lot of what you're talking about, these are just things that are following the laws of of resonance and physics at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and so there is a solid. It's a, it's an exciting, and encouraging that a lot of these kind of perennial truths and ideas that we get from channeling and different um, higher intelligence are being proven by even, you know, the instruments that we have uh, today, which is, yeah. was not always the case. No, no, we understand more and more. We can understand. Yeah. Well, have your, has your personal, as you've kind of focused on increasing your vibration, how has your experience changed? How has my experience changed? Oh, that's a good question. I look back how who I was 20, 30, 40 years ago. We won't go into that one. <laughs> I hope I've changed a little bit for the better one. Uh, I think I'm far more forgiving of when people do something else wrong, which I sort of used to. I love to condemn others and sort of criticizing others. It gave me a false sense of uh, importance. I think that has uh, to a large degree stopped or not uh, gone away. Um, so by not doing that anymore, uh, it's already a helpful situation of feel, maintaining a more peaceful and restful kind of being. And I think the daily exercises and going within ourselves, myself all the time, stops me to get carried away with a problem, a thought complex for too long, mm. which can sometimes occupy me for days or weeks and so on, when I now recognize it very quickly and says, hey, this is not right, let's look into it. And now the fact that I do look at it stops me to just sort of don't ling let it linger. Mm. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's, um, it can seem quite impossible to be forgiving and open hearted uh, at certain times of our life. Before I remember, I would read about these people and I just didn't quite understand it. Um, but I think over long periods of sustained effort of moving in this direction, your fundamental way of being changes and yeah. it's, it, it changes the texture of life and in such a beautiful way. Um, which is why, you know, why I personally feel quite passionate about sharing it. And I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, you have similar type of motivations. Yeah. Yeah. People like to hear that. Feel like it confirmed because I get it from my emails as well. They always say, oh, I always thought about this. I never f knew about it. You brought it out for the first time. And they feel such a relief because for the first time they see something which deep down they have always known to be true. But suddenly they see it visually that this is how it all connects. And they're absolutely uh, starting a new life, basically, because suddenly all the things which bothered bother them are no longer as important as they used to be. Mm. Yeah. And in fact, they're opportunities, um, yeah. the inconveniences, the adversities, they're, they're opportunities. Well, Hans love everything that you're doing in the world, man. It's so needed and so well done. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to tell people about your work. I know you mentioned the website, but maybe now would be another good time. 
um, where people can go if they would like to just learn kind of more about some of your videos and books? Well, the easiest way to go to the YouTube channel, uh, YouTube, uh, and just punch in my name, Hans Wilhelm, and my channel will come up right away. And there you can see all the videos which I have published uh, over the last 10 years, 130 ones. Go to the video with the title which uh, appeals most to you, you think is most important, and see whether it works for you. Or you go to my website, which is lifeexplained.com, where the videos are as well, uh, in a different order. So that's basically the thing and to look it up. You can also go to hanswilhelm.com. Um, that will give you the uh, respective links to these websites as well. If you are anybody interested to know when my latest video is coming out, just subscribe to the newsletter and uh, you will uh, always get the newsletter. You will not get any requests for donations or anything like this because this channel is totally self-funded. Well, we, we appreciate what you do. And for anybody listening, I personally really like the Earth School video as a starting place. And yeah. there's very much a, a fun choose your own adventure after that. Um, well, thanks again, Hans. Really appreciate you. And thanks again, everybody, for listening today. Thank you for being, having invited me, Scott. It was a great pleasure and honor.